inductively coupled plasma, abbreviated as ICP. This video describes the key components of an ICP and how they function. ICPs are useful for detecting trace concentrations of metals in aqueous samples. This is an ICP shown with an autosampler and detector. In this case, the detector is a mass spectrometer. Atomic emission spectrometers are also common. An ICP requires a chiller to maintain the instrument's temperature. Sample introduction in plasma requires a gas source. An ICP has two major components. One, sample introduction. Two, ICP source. Sample introduction. This is a peristaltic pump. It introduces aqueous sample to the nebulizer and removes waste from the spray chamber. Here is the setup in common pitfalls. Most peristaltic pumps will have arrows indicating the direction of the tubing. In this case, tubing should be clamped counterclockwise. When placing the tubing on the peristaltic pump, tubing is placed in the notches and plastic stops are used to keep the tubing snug. Tubing will be clamped to maintain pressure and position. Here are some common mistakes. We are now ready to turn on the ICP. The tube is placed into the sample solution and moving bubbles can be used to monitor uptake. Make sure all bubbles are removed before analysis. The nebulizer converts the aqueous sample into an aerosol. This occurs when the sample is sprayed into a low pressure region created by a high speed gas. The sample is aerosolized as it mixes with the gas. Larger droplets are removed from the spray chamber. The sample is then transported by argon gas to the plasma. The core component of an ICP is the high temperature plasma used to atomize samples. The torch generates a plasma from an argon source. Components of the torch include argon source, coolant gas, sample introduction, load coil, bonnet, shielding plate. The sample is then transported to the detector. This data is from a sample that contains arsenic. Here is the y-axis with intensity in counts per second, and the x-axis with mass-to-charge ratio.